Welcome to today's fun launch party called Relax and Enjoy, a new die for you. Today we're launching the new Die to Try series die. Quilters, I'm Lynn Gibney, AccuQuilt's Chief Brand and Product Officer. I can't wait for you to see this month's Die to Try, so let me quickly introduce you to your hosts, Pam and Erica. Thank you, Miss oh, Lynn. Oh, Lynn. cute jacket. Thank you. It is really You're cute. really changing the cute jacket. I don't, I don't know. know. All right. It's adorable. Well, Quilters, this die is just what you need to take it easy when working on your next project. Oh, we've had such a relaxing time working with it. That's right. We're having a mellow launch party for you all today. But don't worry, because we've got plenty of fun planned for you with some sweet prizes, easy project ideas, and an inspirational trunk show. All right, ladies, I'm going to go get ready for our experts, Jeannie Miller and Shannon Patterson, who will be helping to show off the new die in a little bit. So have a great show. All right. Have fun. All right. That was a really cute jacket. How come we don't have a cute I don't jacket? know. All right. All right. Well, I don't want to wait any longer. Let's see that new die to try. Take it easy while quilting with the Go Sloth die. This cute applique die comes with nine unique shapes to cut up to four layers of pre-fused cotton in any Go fabric cutter. Although these shapes are one of a kind for this die, you can easily use them to create other adorable animals using a variety of materials, including wool, crack foam, and felt. Personalize these playful creatures using the free downloadable embroidery designs available on the AccuQuilt website. Pair this sweet sloth with compatible Go cubes and square dies to make whimsical wall hangings, snuggly throw quilts, precious pillows, and more. You don't have to work hard to create with this laid back animal because at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. I know, it's so soft. She's so relaxing. Just slothy. <laughs> okay, so many people ask for a sloth, including myself. Yes. So. Yes. Oh, and she has been. I have been for a long time. All right, quilters, fun fact. Behind the seams, we have themes for our show. Mm -hmm. Today's theme is the sloth, sloth days, days of, of summer, summer, right? Which is a word play, a play on words for the dog days of summer which is from July 3rd, just after my birthday, right. to August 11th this year, which includes the Gibney's birthday, which is tomorrow. That's right, and happy birthday early happy to, to Miss Lynn Gibney. Yeah. All right, this means that we are going to relax, yes. but still provide you with plenty of inspiration that'll be easy for anyone to do. And to do that, we've got a brand new furry friend who's built for relaxation. All right, let's take a look at the sloth die and see oh, just so how versatile it is. All right, so when you look at this, you think none of these pieces will make a sloth. Oh, but I'll put but them all together. All together. I have to the thread, it just she bothers did. me. Um, right. there, and there's so many pieces, right? Mm -hmm. That you would never, ever cut my hand. Oh, heavens no. no so we've that's got the body. It. So we've got the body here and the head. And here's this little face. face. Here's his very sharp claws. You'll need four of those. Keep that in mind, quilters. Yes. Four legs. Yes. Um, these are like his little cheeks and his mouth and his okay. nose and his eyes. All those fun little face, right. facial so features. So keep in mind that some of the pieces need multiple pieces of fabric. Right, right. Depending on how you're building your slot. Yes. Now, these die shapes are so complex and as you can see some of them are very small you would not you absolutely would not be able to cut these nearly as well or certainly as quickly by hand so instead you can prefuse your fabric you can lay it on cut it in seconds let's let's that's, cut one out so we can I'm build not, a sloth i've never made sloths because no, we because would have to cut them by would, hand yes and we just right. don't do that so I have my dark brown here. Right. I'm gonna, remember, we've already pre-fused our fabric. Yes. You can use up to four layers of pre-fused cotton. Right. 
And we've got a, uh, uh, hold please, hold please. I did, oh wait, here. Now, this is his body. I, I pre-cut these, I pre-cut these, I know what I'm doing. Okay, I have four hands. I have four hands and a face, which is different than his head. Other head, right, his, his head. Yeah, his head. Not his head. And we need four legs. Four so legs. I pre-fused three, and then I and made this one longer. Face. There you go. Okay. Okay. All the pieces. It's on a six by 12 die board. It's gonna fit through all of our cutters, including a go me. Listen, talk about the perfect die for kids. Yes. No sew projects, low sew projects. Oh, so many Half ideas. Half foam and felt. I mean, just all of the things. Yep. All right. All right. So give it some love. And oh, we're fine so with cutting up to those four layers of pre-fused fabric yes. on the die. All right, we're gonna build them because it is so staticky here in the Dream Studio. All right, here there we go. He there's, there's He's really cute. Mouth. I know. You can make him smile or frown. You can do whatever you want here. And Pam and I always save our scrap pieces. Always. So, because like, you can cut more eyes, you can cut more yes, paws, you yes. can cut all kinds of things. Oh wait, okay. we'll just leave them on there. Oh, there we go. Okay. okay. And here's his leggings. Are, do we want them to sit or to uh, lay down? You just want to however you want to build them. I don't know. Okay, well, we should have him. I think he's going to lay down. Okay. He's a sloth, right? He is a sloth, and he should lay down. He should lay down. Okay. Keep going. And there's this little inner face. I have so many hands here. So. Nope. Nope. This is the top of his head. I have a cheat sheet next to me. Oh, okay. Yep, and did you find his other cheek? There you go. There, right there, right there. Yep. Is it more like this? Yeah, here, look. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, except we cut his eyes out to match his, his eyeballs match his cheeks. That's okay, they can match today. Okay. And there's his nose. Oh wait, here, here's his mouth. Yes. <laughs> He's a happy sloth. Okay, let's go. have some paws, shall we? Yep. So the legs go like this. The legs go underneath. Uh-huh. And then these are the paws on the end. So one underneath and one on top, so mm -hmm. that you have that three-dimensional kind of mm -hmm. feel. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Look at how fun he is. How cute. And we have one more leg somewhere. There one we more go. Leg. There we go. Look, I cut so many paws. You did. Okay. Pause, you can never have too many, right? There we go, Who's, who thought those were, words were okay? Okay, so look at how super He's cute so he cute. is. And now this lazy little friend of ours would be wonderful cut out. Of, he's wonderful cut out of cotton, but think yes. about some of the other fabrics you could use. Flannel, cuddle, wool, felt. There are so many great ways to use this little one on quilts, on clothing, tote bags. Oh, that would be super tea cute. Tea towels. Uh, you know I love a good tea towel yeah. project and so many other ideas that yeah. we've got. And there are almost as many different options for finishing these shapes off, but we'll get into that in just a bit. That's right. Right now, I think we should check in with our two experts that we invited to join with us today. That is a great plan. Let's get this party really rolling. So for today's show, we've challenged two of our experts to come up with easy ideas using the Go Sloth Die. Our first expert is Jeannie Miller. Jeannie has used, there's Jeannie, there she yay! Is with a sloth. She's used and sold AccuQuilt products at quilt shows and retailers since 2008. As soon as she was old enough to operate a sewing machine solo, she began her lifelong hobbies of sewing, embroidering, and quilting. Now, Jeannie is an active member of several quilting guilds and is the chapter chair of the Treasure Coast chapter of the Florida Sewing Sew Society. Look at the sloth behind I her. I know, the garland. Oh Isn't my that gosh. adorable? All right, our second excerpt is Shannon Patterson. Shannon has been crafting since before she could hold a pencil. Finger paints were her start of passion for color and creating. Her love of quilting has persisted for over 25 years and includes long arm quilting, machine embroidery, English paper piecing, applique, and drafting her own quilt designs. 
Now, while Shannon recently retired, she enjoys bringing her understanding of manufacturing into her quilting. She enjoys helping others build skills, master techniques, and express their own creativity. Shannon recently moved to the Great Smoky Mountains, living outside of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, with her husband, Jim, and their dog, Barney. Excellent. All right, I think it's time for us to relax for a minute and let our experts do the work and share what they've come up with. Jeannie, what do you have so far? Hey quilters, how are you doing? Well, I'm moving a little slow down here in Florida in all this heat, just like the sloth for our new sloth dye. And I came up with a lot of great ideas to use the new sloth dye. One of the first things I did was I was gonna make a card. So I cut out the sloth parts and I put them standing up because you know, we could put this sloth standing up, sitting, hanging, uh, climbing a tree, all sorts of ways that he can be posed. So I put the sloth on a card and then I said, well, I wonder if I can accessorize him with a few things. And I came up with some great ideas for seasons and holidays to use the sloth dye. So let's take a look at some of these pictures. The first holiday was Valentine's Day, so I used the heart dye. Then there's St. Patrick's Day, and you can see I used the shamrock dye. Then for spring or Easter, I used the eggs from the holiday medley dye, and also a bow from the bow dye. And then to take us into summer, I used the sunglasses from the emoji dye, which fit him perfectly. Then I used some stars, so this would be great for 4th of July, Memorial Day, or Labor Day, all of those um, patriotic holidays. Then moving into fall, I have the witch's hat, Pam's favorite holiday, so that makes a great little hat on our sloth. Then I went to the pumpkins for the uh, Thanksgiving or for the fall holidays, and I thought he looked cute with those. I then cut out just the antlers from the deer head dye and thought he looked really cute as a reindeer. I put him in a sleigh, and then I changed his antlers to using the hat from the gnome dye so that he is the Santa sloth who'll be delivering our presents this year. So wouldn't that make a really cute quilt to put all of those seasons on one quilt? Or perhaps to make different wall hangings just for seasons throughout the year to change. My next idea, because it's a sloth and sloths like to sleep, I made a sloth mask using the mask dye. I used the gnome dye to make my sides here and the circles and the nose and the lips are from the emoji dye. So now, when I need to sleep in, I can keep all that sunlight out so I can have a nice restful day with my mask. And then I made this little vine hanging uh, for hanging from a doorway or perhaps in a children's bedroom or, or even for a party. And I took leaves and I fused both sides of the leaves together and then cut them out so that they go either direction. And then I added my little sloth here. And this would be a cute addition to a party or different types of decor that you might be using the sloth for. And this gave me an idea for my challenge piece, which I'm working on and will be showing you next. So I'll see you in a short bit. Okay, I love the leaves, how she yes. worked the leaves with it. I think it's so great. And that garland, which was super fun. Yes. And think about all, okay, first of all, she made a Halloween sloth. All so, the holidays. So I think that that's a really cute idea because sometimes we kind of need to think outside the box. With, yes. We have so many, we have summer medley dyes and fall medley dyes and hearts and stars. I think it's well, a great idea. And she always makes such fun projects. She does. All right, well, I hope that the first winner of a Go Sloth Tie wants to recreate some of those projects because I think they were pretty fun. I think they are too. All right, quilters, our first lucky winner of a Go Sloth Tie is, drum roll please. <laughs> Margaret H. of Bennington, Nebraska. Congratulations. Oh, right up the street. Congratulations, Margaret. Oh, she's gonna love it. She is. 
All right, well, after seeing what Jeannie made, I am too excited to wait to see what our other expert has come up with. Shannon, what have you got for us? Hello, quilters. My inspiration came from the internet. So as soon as I heard sloth, I went out and started searching images. Sloth sleeping, sloth climbing, sloth drinking coffee, and came up with some adorable images that then I could use the components of the dye to create those shapes. So I adore this little guy with the coffee mug. And that inspired me to create this tote, which you see here. I think he's a cutie with his little coffee for the morning. Also, and you'll recognize that that came from the coffee and tea medley dye. Also, I had to put a cup of tea on one. So here he is with his cup of Earl Grey. Now, I also uh, was looking for anything that might inspire me. And there are sets out there. So that helps you to understand maybe how to position the arms and the legs or how to change, you know, from the shapes that the the packaging on the die show to where he's climbing a branch. Now we do have the stem and leaves die that you can use for a branch. It works perfectly. Um, go out there, check out these images. I just downloaded a few, some of the funny sayings, nap all day, sleep all night. Take your time, get plenty of sleep, get a grip on things. These were all adorable. You could add some lettering to your designs too. These guys really have inspired me. And I think you're gonna see something about these um, in my project. We'll, I'll be showing that to you later. Also, don't forget that you can just use the cute little face pieces. Now this could be a patch. It ends up being three inches by three and a half inches. That's a good size to cover a, you know, a hole on a pair of jeans or to put a little uh, decor on a pocket on a shirt. So. I love this die. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. My goal will be to have, you know, something done quickly to celebrate the slowness of the sloth. Okay, first of all, we need shirts that say uh, nap all day, sleep, sleep all, all night. night. Absolutely. I, I love how she incorporated the sleepy sloth with the coffee cup. That was that so was really clever. Cute. And her bag was darling. It really was. I, okay, and I think it's great to just go to the internet and Look up ideas so that you can- Get some inspiration. Yeah, get some inspiration. Yeah. Look for some fun things. Absolutely. All right, and our quilting brains are spinning with ideas because our experts are so clever. They really are. All right, let's take a closer look at a few of their ideas and some of the dyes that will work really well with our little sloth. And I think we should start with our Go Stems and Leaves style. We should. So this is one that is a perfect fit for making our sloth a little branch to hang off of, right? Right, because you can have a branch, right there. different kinds of branches, all different kinds of leaves. Right. And I think that it's super fun. You can always cut them out of cotton, but we could also cut them out of craft foam. So I have a little bit of craft foam here. Right. You know, it's my favorite thing to cut with. Yes, so leaves, green leaves, and brown stem. Yeah, yeah. Moon stars. Moon stars, all the things, all right. And with, now once we pre-fuse our fabric, we don't have to worry about lengthwise grain, nor do we have to worry about it when we're cutting craft foam or felt. That's right. And um, I only cut one layer of craft foam. I usually. only cut one layer at a time as well. Yeah. And this was a really fun project um, for like kids or green kids uh, because you can build the sloth. So there he is. Oh, there's He's a branch. cute little branch for him to lay on. And leaves. Okay, what kind of leaves does a sloth eat? I don't know. It's not like koalas, right? I don't no, know. I almost said eucalyptus and that's a koala. I don't know, we had a whole conversation about what kind of animal was a sloth. And he's a mammal, <laughs> not a marsupial. Not a marsupial, we had that marsupial. discussion already. How come I say that word wrong all the time? I don't know. I'm an intelligent person. I went to, I went to, college. I went to we college. college. just before the show even. Okay, all right, but he is so cute. But how about another great die is our goat cookie oh, decorations. yes. I love the thought of using the little heart, right, yes. to show some slothy love, or the bow if it's a little girl sloth. Oh, love it. Or right. a bow tie. Or a bow tie uh, for a little boy. It could be a formal sloth. It could be a formal sloth. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. Use the top hat from Holiday Accessories. And he could be a, a bow tie and he's he's going he's, he's going clubbing. He's going clubbing. <laughs> All right. 
very, but very slowly. <laughs> very slowly. All right. Well, oh, wait, wait. We forgot to tell the best one. Wait. So Kenyon on our team. Oh, yes. Says we were going to make this. We were. Um, that this should be a cape. And he would be like super sloth, which Brock then said. Super sloth. Super sloth, which meant he would just then walk like the normal speed. Right. He would move at a normal yeah. speed. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Well, we also don't want to forget about those seasonal ideas that Jeannie talked about, like sloths draped over pumpkins, mm -hmm. sloths peeking out between behind maple leaves and the, from the Go Fall medley. Or how about hugging a Christmas tree oh. from the Go Holiday medley die? Remember, quilters, you can use craft foam that we showed you, felt, mm -hmm. cardstock, and glue, and create gift bags or wrapping paper. And you I just can, think it's really fun. You can press this. You can press your fused cotton onto a gift bag. You can. Onto, I do it all the time. You can. So I can see putting these little sauce to use on so many projects. And they're great for no-sew projects too, like we said. Mm -hmm. But also just so many things. Just low, sl low slow. S slow and what steady. What is that? Slow. Something slow. Slow and low, steady. Slow. Low so projects. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave now. <laughs> She's having slothy issues with her words <laughs> right, today, quilters. <laughs> before we go any further, quilters, we want to know. Between that and marsupial, did I say right? Yes, oh, you did. Hallelujah. Did you fit? Okay, here's the question. Do you finish quilts faster or slower than a sloth? <laughs> And with your words correct or not, Good grief. let us know in the comments section wherever you're streaming our show. Okay, first of all, I am a fast quilter. I like to get quilts and make them and finish blocks. Get in, get such out. I am a slow binder. Most of my UFOs need binding. In fact, I was just in Arizona a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. um, at Mole Queen Sewing, and I literally brought two projects that weren't bound yet because I they were perfect for our trunk show and they weren't bound. <laughs> what I should do is bind them and then take them with me when I travel and then pass them around the room and let everybody let sew everybody them. sew them. But I, I, think. I have to say I am fast at doing my tops. Yes. I am slow like a sloth at getting them quilted. And Erica likes to do tons of smaller projects. I do like to do She will do projects. 10 smaller projects to my one big quilt. I like it's wall true. hangings yeah, and place mats yeah. and table runners just and do different things. Yeah. Okay. All right, as promised, we're gonna talk more about the applique process and embroidery for our new little friends. And this is gonna open up way more project yes. ideas for us, yes. right? Like clothing items, towels, aprons, quilts, table runners, and more. Yep all my little projects and big ones too. Now for starters, you'll press your fusible onto the back of your fabric before you cut your sh mm -hmm. before you cut your shapes just like we showed you earlier. And we sell a variety of fusible products on our website, so just don't forget to pop one into your cart so you'll be all ready to go. Right. So put together your sloth, maybe like we did with a branch from the go stems and leaves die that we showed earlier and press it down on your project. Now you're ready to finish the edges with a decorative stitch from right. your domestic machine or maybe a straight stitch just inside that raw edge. For projects like wall hangings that won't have a lot of wear and tear or washing, you can just quilt right over the top. This would be why I like making wall hangings. Because you can just I can quilt go right over, over the, the top. top. Think about fun embellishments you can use too. I'm thinking little buttons for the oh, eyes. Yeah. Um, maybe some rickrack or some trim, you know, depending on the season your sloth is living in or right. whether he's going clubbing, I guess. Um, now, if you have an embroidery machine. I'm totally making a clubbing <laughs> sloth. <laughs> this opens up and even. And a super sloth. And a Super sloth. Super sloth. Um, free downloadable embroidery designs for the sloth, and we oh, should probably yes. get a super. I've got them over here. Oh, okay. So these are the team was so in love with our sloth that we made two different sets. Okay, one these are laying so on a cute. branch and one sitting. Okay, so, so you do the sitting sloth first. So here's the sitting sloth with the motif stitch, the blanket stitch, and the satin stitch. And which one of those would you use for like a tote bag? So a tote bag, I'd probably use the motif for a satin stitch because it's gonna get a little bit more use. If you're doing a wall hanging or a pillow, blanket mm -hmm. stitch is great. I love the look of that one. Uh -huh. If you're doing clothing, I'd probably go for the satin stitch, something that's gonna get washed a lot. I like the motif stitch. It gives I really 
that do. furry look. Yeah, he is, he is definitely furry. Okay, so now show us the laying sloth. The laying sloth. Okay, uh, my mason, his spirit animal is a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here he is laying on the branch and this is from the stems and leaves. Yes. Don't forget, all of our applique shapes have free embroidery downloads. Yes. Not just the new ones. That's right. We went back and fixed all the old ones right. too. And then here he is with the uh, motif stitch. Yes. I do like that motif stitch. And then this one's really fun because you can really see his claws. Yes. I like it. All right. These designs are free downloads at AccuQuilt.com. So you want to log into your account and mm -hmm. download them. I like to save them to my computer. Yep then download what I want to stitch out onto a flash drive. From there, all you have to do is take your flash drive to your embroidery machine, hoop your stabilizer in your background, and you're ready to roll. It's gonna put down a placement stitch, Yes. right? Yes, so we're building them from the bottom up. So there's all, because there are so many pieces. So just like any other embroidery, it's gonna stitch from the bottom up. It's gonna give you a placement stitch to show you how to place each piece as you go. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna put them in the correct order. It's really slick and much easier than the traditional method of machine right. applique where you put down a piece of fabric and then it stitches and then you have to take tiny little flat scissors and trim around the edge. It's never gonna look as good as this. Never in my life have I done this. Also, this is a really good chance. Um, we have these great little shovel irons mm -hmm. and our wool mats that will allow oh, you yeah, to- Oh yeah, they're really good for this. To do those little ironing downs. Yes. Okay. We also have some super cute, adorable downloads um, that are available for purchase. So let's take a look at this. I know, I got the flock okay. fall. You have the fall? I don't know. I thought I did. I think he's over there with the other pile. Hold, please. Oh, there he is. Okay, look at this. Oh, there he is with my pumpkin. He is, and look at that cute little hat. That's from These Holiday are, Accessories. Yeah, this is from um, our good friends at uh, Specialty Designs. Yes. Look at how cute this is. All now, right. V-Stitch came out with a set. Okay. So here's the, oh, and this is fun. It's got some... Just, these are just a little bit more detailed. Like you've got right. some wood detail here right. on the branch and the little leaves are in, are actually embroidered on. Oh, there's the heart. A and that's not a, a die, it's just em, um, embroidered on there. So Those cute. are so cute. And then this one I thought was adorable. Yes. This is the mom and the baby sloth. Yes. And this is the arm, right? I the think so, The baby is the yeah. arm. Yep, and then the rest just stitches out. So cute. Look at how cute it that is. is. So cute. And there's that bow I know. from Cookie Decorations. All right, we have them all. Yes, So those we are do. for purchase, they're available at our website. Check them out. Okay. Okay. So should we clear off the... Uh, sure, why not? Okay. So there we go. All right. <laughs> now all this embroidery talk, let's give away another one, shall let's we? Do. Okay. Our second lucky winner of a Go Sloth Die is Drumroll, please. <laughs> Kayla S. from Anton, Texas. Congratulations, Congratulations. Kayla. You're gonna love it. Oh, I bet today's lucky winners want even more inspiration. I think we should see what our experts reveal projects are. Oh, I can hardly wait. Okay, you ready? Yes. Jeannie, so what hi, do you have? Here I am back with my challenge piece. So I decided to have my sloth hanging out in some trees. So I made this great little wall hanging, and to do that I used my four inch cube. I was a little worried about sewing those little pieces, Erica, so I used a new program that I've purchased that goes along and utilizes the AccuQuilt cubes. And it's called My, Piece, my Block Piecer, and it's available from Dime. And I used that and saved the file, this pinwheel file, so that it's stitched in my embroidery machine. And it gave me placement to lay down my pre-cut pieces and then fold them over. And then it would stitch that down and it would give me the placement for the next piece. So it was a piece of cake to make these nice little pinwheels, even though I'm using that four inch cube to do it. Then I added in some sashing so I could have the tree branches, 
and I embroidered on my sloth with using one of the free downloadable designs from AccuQuilt. And then I had gotten the idea to add some dimension to my wall hanging by taking some of those leaves that I had cut out with both sides of the fabric and attaching them to my branches. So I think it looks really uh, nice and having uh, that third dimension to it really makes it stand out. And of course I had found this really cute sloth fabric to put in as my border. So I hope you enjoy my challenge piece, sloth hanging in the trees. Okay. okay. So cute. So cute. So that dime embroidery program is, we've done some shows we with have dime. dime. We've been guests on their yep. show uh, about that, that pieces in the hoop. And pieces it's in the hoop. fascinating. But the thing, well, the two things I love the most was that she made those leaves three-dimensional. Yes. You know, um, I often think about that. I think about, you know, as quilters, we like to just quilt everything down. Right. You know, but it's so fun to have three-dimensional. And she found sloth fabric. She did that border. I don't know if you could tell, but if you're watching on a phone, you probably couldn't tell, but that was pink sloth fabric around Love the border. It. Love it. All right, I can hardly wait to see. Shannon, what have you made for us? Hello, quilters. I would like to introduce you to Go Slow and Steady Sloth project that I created using the new Go Sloth die. The idea behind this particular project was that you could put it together in a weekend. And how I did it so quickly was I pulled out the triangle and square dies 13 and 14 from the eight inch cube companion corners and put together this arrow motif that you see in the blocks across the top. Now for the embroidery, I used the two free appliques that you get from AccuQuilt with, that you can download for the die. In the middle, I used the V-stitch design that they have there that is the sitting sloth. And then the two corners, I manually put those together and used my domestic sewing machine to blanket stitch around them. So it really did go together very quickly. I hope that you like it as much as I do. Okay, leave it to Shannon to do yes. all the different kinds of stitches. And all the different blocks to figure mm -hmm. out using her square um, triangle and a square She's like such an that. Engineer. <laughs> she is. is. But I think it's super fun to think that this is a weekend project. Yes. And both Jeannie and uh, Shannon's uh, patterns are available as free downloads yes. from AccuQuilt.com. So I just think that it's really fun to think about, oh, this is like a weekend project. Right, right. Right. Whether you move slow like a sloth or not. Yes. <laughs> These projects are just wonderful. And we've got even more projects to share. So we should start with today's trunk show. Hey, Lynn, you want to come give us a hand? Lynn, oh, here you hand. are. Oh. So here's the first one. This is the Go Baby Sloth Throw Quilt by Susie Webster of Webster Quilt. This is the pattern that's on the packaging. Yes. So this is the video that the lovely Erica and I made uh, showing you how to put together the project. And uh, we used the eight inch cube here yes. to make these nice big 16 inch blocks. And then we used the eight and a half inch square that finishes to eight inches to go in the center yep. for our applique project. Oh, this reminds me, quilters, these are directional shapes. Oh, yes. So depending on which way you want your sloth to face, you either have your fabric all facing up or fan folded back and forth. Well, we and forgot the, to the say directional, that. The directional, the most important for that is going to be his the little face. cheek pieces on his face. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so I did want to point out, this is a great example of, many of us have the 8-inch cube. Yes. Because it came with our ready, set, go. So the 8.5-inch square, and then it's a 4.5-inch strip that makes the border. Those are a couple of great ideas to, you know, if you are just building your die library right. to include because they work so well together. And yeah. then the two and a half inch strip die that every Everybody. quilter needs for the sashing between the box. And yeah. this is a great, what we call a base pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do this with Christmas fabric yep. and you could have a Christmas sloth or you could have a Christmas scene. You know, yes. you've got so many options. You could do it for any holiday. You could have you one for every New holiday. New Year's and make him a fancy sloth with a bow tie, bow tie and, and a top, top hat. hat. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> we didn't She's even practice them out of the clubs. <laughs> All right. So the next one. Oh, this okay, is the adorable. Next is so cute. This is Hanging There While Hanging by Christina Brinkerhoff of Center Street Quilts. And everything about this is super, super it's so cute. cute. And this is a great, like, Oakley, who's nine, could create this project with me because she could yes. cut out all the shapes and we Place could print, them. yeah, and iron them on. Yeah. Lynn, what size strip did we use for the back? The three and a half inch strip? So there is a three and a half inch strip, yes. It finishes to three inches. Yes. And this is our carefree alphabet. We've got the uppercase and the lowercase mm -hmm. here. And then we've used the one inch strip die, I think, to make this branch. Yeah. And then some smaller ones in those leaves from stems and leaves. Or, you know, there's other, there's lots of different flower and petal yeah. shapes that you could use for that. And I love this, but as I was looking at it earlier, we should use a little leaf for the eye, the dot on the eye. Oh, isn't that cute? Sometimes I'm smart. Yes. So, and just a bit of trivia, this is from Aditya Sitar's uh, Simple Shapes. That's where the leaf oh, came from. Oh, that's where that oh, leaf goes. came from. Yeah, so oh, that's... Oh, very nice. There's a little, there's a tiny straight piece there too in that I'm sure it's just scraps right yeah 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 there's yes Perfect. so very cute love the colors I think it's darling now all the right next you can totally make one. it bigger oh yes the absolutely. next one is go animals on parade wall hanging this is by Marianne Fontana of Fontana originals and Marianne has taken our shapes from our sloth and made all these different animals. Isn't that fun? It's really fun. So the elephant and then here's the face and the arms. This is your little favorite, the little chicken. I love the little chick. And then yep. we've got Clifford the big red dog, I guess, yep. down there in the corner. And then a donkey right here. I'm gonna pull this out. So this is a perfect example of how you can always take those shapes and make them into other things. And when, uh, not, uh, when we first released the owl die, we mm -hmm. did something yes. very similar. So we've so got, here, I'll grab this, this was kind of a, an inspiration piece, I think, yeah. for this. Because our animals, we always want to be able to do more with them. So this is our talk to the animals quilt. And this is, all these animals are made with the go owl die. So here's our owl right here. And knowing that, then you can look at the bunny and the raccoon, you can, and all the other animals, and see how those are all made with the pieces from the go owl, right. just like we've made all of these little animals. I thought Marianne that was hedgehog so clever. With so clever. the pieces from the sloth die, mm -hmm. and we've even got some embroidery that's gonna help you with that as well. Oh, yes. yes. I Let think they're over it. there on the side. There's some Let samples of some of them. So the other thing, the fox that we just, um, if you if you were lucky enough, you to were lucky get enough a fox, to catch one of those sly little fellows. That's another one that you could you could create other animals or bugs or aliens right. oh, or yes. whatever you want aliens. out of those, aliens. those shapes. Yep. So here's some of them. Here we'll show them overhead. I love this little lion. Yeah, he's really There's cute. There's the frog, super cute. And a panda. The elephant. Very cute. Aren't they cute? It's great to see them in a little bit lighter fabrics too. Mm -hmm. You can see the stitching. Yeah, you can. They really, they really pop. All right. Now the, so many clever so things. So many clever ones. Now the next one is, I think, my favorite. It's the Glow Sloth Reading Pillow by Melanie Call of A Bit of Scrap Stuff. And she's used some gorgeous Riley Blake oh, fabric. fabric. Isn't this fun? So pretty. Has so a pocket. You could tuck a book in it. And she's used the classic alphabet here, and then the numbers and symbols die. Yep. And different leaves. Yep. I yeah. just love this. And I love that Riley Blake fabric on it, too. And yeah. This is a three and a half inch square. So that's either from okay. your six inch or your 12 inch cube. Oh, good to or know. Or three yeah. and a half inch. Or the three and a half inch strip. Kind yep. of in the squares, yes. Yep. And then it has a, a handle. Oh, has that. a handle, so you can, so you take can it with you. You can take it with you now. Now I was looking at this, and I you could totally make it bigger for a bigger pillow. Mm -hmm. Yes, right, right. But I love this size for a child. Yes. This is really a cute size be, for the kids. I mean, this would be a great like baby shower gift. Oh, fun! Right, first birthday yeah. gift. Oh, yeah. Or, or um, yeah. Yeah. Or your 62nd birthday, yeah. whatever is happening. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whichever one it may be. Lynn is having a birthday specific. <laughs> Lynn is having a birthday tomorrow. I feel I like know, it she's might not going to be 62. <laughs> no, she is not. <laughs> okay. All right. She we like this. Told us what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. All right. I do want to point out. So on the back, it's it's nice too. There's a uh, th there's a zipper. Now you could just do a regular um, back. Uh, right. In, in a future show, we're going to show how to 
put a zipper right oh, on the pillow yes, back. Yes, are we, we are. doing that? Some June yeah. Taylor, yes oh, we are. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! One of these so, days, and not so good to not come tomorrow, to Pam. Not tomorrow. <laughs> so so good. good to come to breathe, work every now breathe and then. Deeply, breathe right. deeply. Okay. okay, so that's cute. But this is so cute. Yes. Now the next project I haven't actually seen. It's the Ghost Sloth Jacket by Brianna Roberts of So Cute and Quirky. It's supposed to have Benetrix fabric on it, but I haven't seen a jacket anywhere. Have you? Oh my gosh! There is the Gibney. There we go. Look at her. Can you see it? So She's Brianna been... Roberts is one of our new designers, right? Yes. And I think this is so cute because this is actually like a panel. Like a panel. And then she's got the rick rack across the top and bottom. Love the leaves she's used. Uh -huh. it's so this great. would be a great like teenage project where you could just, you know, have your teenager oh, yeah. and, and because what she did was create the panel first and right. then sewed it on. And then just sewed it and on. And then give, Lynn, will you turn for a second? around because I was thinking it would be oh, really fun yes. to have a sloth face right there in the front. Oh, that's a cute idea. Yeah, this I, is really darling. Well, the, I like the idea of the sloth face for a patch, you know, on jeans. Oh, or, yeah. Yes, that's a great idea. And, you know, if you pick up a, you know, I know some of us have a lot of jean jackets, but you can also get them at, you know, you know Goodwill or somewhere. Right. Thrifting and, and, and thrifting. Some fun. How yeah. fun. So. Okay, I like great. that. I love that. Well, I know what she's taking home. She's wearing it, right? <laughs> yeah. All of these patterns are available as free downloads from the AccuQuilt website. Be sure to download your patterns before your dies arrive, so be ready to go. That includes those free downloadables for Marianne's project. Yes. The extra um, yes. animals. Okay, I don't know. Give me, Lynn, what are you taking with you? Well, I think I've got Not just pillow. the jacket, but the so pillow, good. too. And the jacket, you know, it fits. It is her birthday tomorrow. We oh, must be nice. Oh, that's right. Oh. Okay, well... Okay. Um, I think I'm going to take this embroidery, too. There you I'm go. I'm really inspired by this. It's so cute. All right. Enjoy All the, the rest things. of the show. Thanks. She must have a lot of jean jackets, man. Oh, my gosh. All right. I think we should check our fabric mailbox and see what fabric selections our friends from Northcott have provided for us to give away to two of you who have your email entered for the show. Okay, you ready? All right. Ready? Okay, hold on. Oh my gosh. Ooh, okay, I'm going to like this. Slothy goodness? It is slothy goodness. Oh, look. Look at these. These are batiks. These are fun batiks, like fun forest batiks. And oh, I love for that. these. Perfect for the. Um, okay, these are these Banyan batiks, not Northcott. But look, by Northcott? By Northcott. Oh, there we go. Thank goodness there somebody we... was in charge. <laughs> That was not me. Okay, right but there. look, this would Fine be North these would be perfect for the Promise. stems and leaves. These oh, would be yes. perfect for sloths. Oh, and they're a little bit different. Well, boutiques just are a little bit different by nature. I know. Okay, yes. Yeah, right. so these are gorgeous, but we are gonna have to give them away, Pam. I know. I was hoping the fact that they were Banyan boutiques and not Northcott, we could keep them, but I look don't at think that. that counts. All right, first winner of a selection of fabric is drum roll, please. Ed B. of Davis, Illinois. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Our second winner of a selection of fabric is, drum roll please. Tennessee from Auburn, Washington. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our it all fell right Oh over. my gosh. Huge shout out to Northcott Fabrics for sending us oh. these yummy boutiques. Can I, I trust you to send these to them? I guess. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of batiks ever since yes. we did Log Cabin. Yes. And I use batiks there. Yes. All right, All right, quilters. The time has come. We ask if you are faster or slower than a sloth when it comes to finishing your quilts. Let's take a look at your answers. All right. Pam R says uh, she is slower in most cases. <laughs> Rhonda A says definitely the slowest sloth ever. I think it's that's okay. A it's not a race, not right? A race, right. Uh, Danielle S. says, depends on what time of the year it is. Summer, she is way slower. Winter, she is faster. Is she, she must. Cold? Well, I feel like she must live where we live, where the summer, oh. she can go outside. In the winter, right. she has to stay inside. Right. Where, like Arizona, where I just was in, it's 123. Uh, they sew <laughs> in the summer, and they go outside oh, in the winter. good heavens, yes. Now, Rose F., she's a speedy quilter. And Damercy says, depends on the deadline. <laughs> Like, oh, when amen. Does that baby quilt do? Amen to that. Yeah. When is that shower? Okay, Julie K says, so slow. 
<laughs> I and love Susan that. Susan H is a fast quilter, and just like me, she is a slow binder. But most people are slower than sloths. That yep. was the most common answer. Yep. All right, speaking of finishing quilts, you can take your time to make one or as many as you like <laughs> to participate in Covering the World One Quilt at a Time campaign for the rest of 2023. Now, we have partnered with Island Batik, who's one of our sponsors, and Baby Lock, another sponsor. Each week, someone from Island Batik or AccuQuilt's team will be making a quilt and donating it to a charity of their choice. And don't worry, Erica and I are on the schedule. Yes. She put me on the schedule and said, oh, by the way. By the way. I think like sometime September, October. I had one that I was thinking I was going to donate, and my friend said, well, if you're donating that, you can just donate it to me because that's my favorite one. So there I don't go. know. I well, think Erica I may have to come I, up Erica with another one. Erica and I are on one. the schedule. And no, because we're using one of our upcoming new dyes for it. You didn't know that yet, but that's Surprise, the Surprise, surprise. You know what? We learn things every day when you come to work. All right, once you've made your quilt, donate it to whatever charity you'd like and post a public photo of it with the name of the charity and the hashtag Quilt the World 2023 on social media or in Covering the World One Quilt at a Time, their Facebook group, by December 31st. Now, you can make as many quilts to donate as you like, and following these steps means that you're entered into monthly prize drawings as well as the grand prize drawing that's going to occur on January 1st, 2024. Can you believe it's almost 2024? <laughs> you said that every time. It just sends me go. over the edge. <clears throat> uh, we're happy to have received even more Quilt the World donation quilts. And now it's time to announce the winner for, of July since it is August 1st today. That's right. The July Quilt the World campaign winner who's going to get a Island Batik Fat Quarter Bundle and some AccuQuilt reward points. The total value is $250. Right. Drum roll, please. It's Gail L. from Clinton, Maryland. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. I think we've got a picture of her quilt, right? Yeah. She donated it. I love this that magic. That is so pretty. It Look, is. Just, strips. Look at how pretty that is, just in time for fall. Absolutely. And Gail donated it to Project Linus. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Gail, and thank you for your donation. We do love it here. All right, quilters, we have tons of great deals available for you on our website. Oh, we do. Now, to get your order in right now, just open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party. It'll take you to the site. You can see the offers and place your order. Now, remember, our Go Sloth die is our die to try for the month of August. That means they're only available from us or your local AccuQuilt retailer, and only while supplies last. And our last two Die to Try series dies, well, they've sold out way before the end of the month, so don't dilly-dally. All right, get don't you one. Don't be like a sloth. Get your sloth now. Get you one. They're available from AccuQuilt.com, your local retailer. All right, it's time for the lovely Eric and I to get ready for our next show. We hope that today's trunk show was just what you needed to take it easy when making your next project. See you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Tomorrow, the lovely Eric and I will be starting our next 2023 AQS and AccuQuilt Along series with all of you. You'll want to tune in to see if you've won a door prize that we give away during our shows. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be having a special replay event to share family-friendly project ideas. We can't wait for you to join us.